Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can hover your mouse over an object and display its name, just like this here. And you can do this with different objects. So whatever the name of the object is, when you hover your mouse over it, it's going to display the name of it up top. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by designing the label that we're gonna put on the object, and then we'll take a look at the scripting for it. So to help us design this label, what I'm gonna do first is insert a part into the game. With this part here, the next thing I'm gonna do is insert a Buildboard GUI onto this part. So you can just click on the plus sign, and then click on Buildboard GUI. If you don't see in this menu here, you can just start typing it right here. So Buildboard GUI, and then go ahead and click on it. Once you have the Buildboard GUI, we're gonna be adding a text label to it. At this point, we're just going to be changing some of the properties down here to make it look how we want to. So the first thing I'm going to do is select always on top. After that, for the offset, I'm going to change the second number to a 3. So this property right here is going to control how high above the object the label is. So for me, 3 looks pretty good, but you're welcome to raise or lower that number if you want to. All right, and next we're going to be changing some of the properties of the text label. So let's go ahead and click on it. The first thing I'm going to do for this text label is make the background transparent. To do that, I'm just going to find background transparency and change this number to 1. After that, I'm going to scroll down into the text section. Under the text section, the first thing I'm going to do is select text scaled. After that, I'm going to choose a new font for it. So I like this one right here, but you can choose another one if you want to. That's all I'm going to do for the customization for my text label. You're welcome to change some of the other properties if you want it to look different. After you finish customizing your text label, we're going to rename the Buildboard GUI. So go ahead and right click on it and then press rename. We're going to rename it to Name GUI. Make sure the capitalization matches, so I have a capital N and then a capital GUI. After you rename it, we're going to click and drag it into Starter GUI. And then to make sure it doesn't show up on the screen like this, we're just going to unselect Enabled. All right, and now we're ready to start with the scripting. So we're going to be adding a local script inside of starter player scripts. We're going to be using the user input service to detect when the mouse moves on the screen. So let's go ahead and start by getting the user input service. So we'll say local, and then we'll shorten it to UIS. And that's going to be equal to game, colon, get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put quotation marks, and then user input service. After that, we're going to make a variable for the player. So that's going to be local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. Then we're going to make a variable for the mouse. We'll say local mouse, and that's going to be equal to player colon and get mouse. After that, we're going to make a variable for our billboard GUI that we stuck in the starter GUI. To do that, we'll just say local label. And we're going to set that equal to player dot player GUI. And then we're going to say colon wait for child. And inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of the billboard GUI. And we change that to name GUI. So make sure what you put inside of here matches the name of the billboard GUI. What we're going to do next is say USI, which is our user input service, dot input changed. So this is going to fire whenever there is a change in input. So in our case, we're going to be checking to see when the mouse moves on the screen. We're going to say colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put function. Next to function, we're going to put parentheses and then input. If you move the cursor in between the last two parentheses and then press enter, you should get the end automatically. Inside this function, we're going to say if mouse dot target, then so that means the mouse is currently on an object. And before we go any farther, let me go ahead and show you how to set up an object so that it works with this script. So back over here, what I'm going to do just to keep it simple is use this part right here. So what I'm going to insert inside this part is a bool value. And then I'm going to rename the value to label. So there might only be certain objects in your game that you want to display a label for. So this is an easy way that we can kind of tell which parts to display a label for and which ones not to. If we see a label inside the part when the mouse hovers over it, then we know that's something that we want to display a label for. And just as an example for the base plate here, I don't have that label inside the base plate. So whenever my mouse moves on the base plate, nothing's going to happen. All right, so now we can go ahead and go back to the script. 
So once my mouse is on an object, I want to check that object to make sure it has this label inside. To do that, I can say if mouse dot target colon find first child. And inside here will be the name of the object I'm looking for. So I want to check this part or object to see if it has label inside. So I can just put label inside of quotation marks. If it does have that label, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that billboard GUI to it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say player dot player GUI. And then I'm going to say dot name GUI. To make this billboard GUI visible, I'm going to say dot enabled is equal to true. And then I want to attach it onto the object that my mouse is at. So I'll say player dot player GUI dot name GUI dot adorn. So this is how we're going to attach that billboard GUI onto the object. So to attach it to the object, I just need to set it equal to the object, which is going to be mouse dot target. And the final step is to change the text on the text label to the object's name. And I can do that by saying player dot player GUI. So the same first part. So let me go ahead and just copy it. And then here I'm going to say dot text label. And I'm going to set that equal to the object's name. So that's going to be mouse dot target. And then dot name. Okay, and I just noticed that these two are incorrect. So it should be lowercase u and i for the player GUI. And it looks like the other thing that I forgot to do was add dot text to this text label. So we want to change the text property of the label. Everything else looks okay, so let's go ahead and try it out now. All right, so I want to try it out on this part in the middle. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the part, and we can see the label appears. One problem we're going to have right now, though, is whenever I move my mouse away from the object, the label doesn't disappear. So that's the next part of the script we're going to work on. Whenever the mouse moves away from the object, we're going to make that label disappear again. All right, so to do that, we're just going to add an else to this if statement right here. So we're going to say else. And then to make that label disappear, we're just going to reverse all these values. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it down below. For the enable property, I'm going to change this to false. I'm going to set this property equal to nil. And then for the text, we're just going to make it blank. And it looks like one of my ends disappeared. So if that happens to you, just add a new one. So you should have an end for this if else statement, and then also an end for the if, and one final end for the function. All right, so let's go and test the game and check it out. All right, so let's go and try out the part again. So I move my mouse inside the object and I get the label. When I move my mouse away from the object, it disappears. This can also work for tools and models with a slight modification to the script. You can see when I move my mouse over the smoothie here, I get the name mesh part, which is not what we want. We want the name smoothie, which is the name of the model. And then for the tool, you can see I have handle, which is the name of one of the parts inside the tool, but it's not actually the name of the tool. So let me show you on the script how we can modify this for tools and models so that it displays the correct name. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if mouse dot target. And I'm going to see if it has a parent. So for models, if I put the label value inside one of the parts for the model, what I want to check for is to see if that part belongs to a model. If it does belong to a model, then I'm going to display that name instead. Okay, so if mouse.target.parent. And then I'm going to add another check, and I'm going to say and mouse.target.parent. And I want to make sure that's not equal to the workspace. So I'm going to use this symbol and then equal, so that's not equal. And then I'm going to make sure it's not equal to game.workspace. If that's the case, then what I'm going to do is instead of displaying just the target's name, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to change it from mouse.target, and then I'm going to add a dot parent. But we can only display the name of the parent if it actually has one. So that's why we're checking for the target's parent right here. Okay, otherwise, if it's just a normal part, we'll say else, and then we'll move this line inside. All right, so this additional line right here will work for models and tools. So let's just go ahead and check it out and make sure it works. Okay, so my part still works the same. If I move my mouse over the workspace, you can see nothing happens. If I move my mouse inside the smoothie, I get the correct name. And the same happens for the sword. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. You can use this script in a variety of different ways. You can use it to show the names of display items like I have here. 
You can also use this for an adventure or role-playing game where the player is walking around and you can have them identify different objects just by moving their mouse over it. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.